Yeah, Coach, I was wondering if you could walk us through uh, when you found out that the, the game was canceled on Friday and, and how quickly you were able to, to get into Alabama mode as far as scouting and, and film and things like that. Oh, boy. Um, I don't really want to relive that, but, um, you know, we had just finished our prep, however many days that was. Um, as I was walking off the practice floor, um, Riley Hall said, administration said, uh, don't get on the plane. Uh, we're waiting to see what's going to happen with Texas A&M. Um, and then we were boarding the bus and uh, we were going to fly out of XNA and fly into Houston which kind of baffled me in itself since we were on our fourth different uh, bus company. Um, others had canceled as we tried to set that trip up. Um, but we heard everything was fine there. Um, as far as the weather and everything else, although the Houston Rockets canceled their game on Saturday, um, we were supposed to fly on Friday. Um, and then, you know, just as we were about to take off, because I would have rather waited at the airport than drive out to XNA and then get word because it was just going to push us back another 40 minutes. So I said, let's let's just go and we'll find out when we get there. And then we got the phone call literally as the, as bags were being packed onto the bus. And then we tried like, you know, as hard as we could. But you're realistically to get somebody to play you. Um, probably not going to happen in, you know, 24 hours. We tried though. We tried very politely too. We didn't, we didn't try to do anything other than just make some phone calls. That was, that was all we did. We, we, that was it. We just made phone calls in a nice, polite manner. And how quickly were y'all able to, to get started on the Alabama prep? Oh boy. So that, so we, I mean, we practiced Saturday Hutch and then, uh, you know, took off Sunday. So we, you know, we had one day prep, then we took off, then we came back, you know, today. So um, not really an advantage. If we would have, if we would have found out a little bit, you know, sooner on the A&M game, you know, we could have started a little earlier, but um, that's great that we got to practice twice now for A&M um, and get a full prep in both times for a game that never happened. Bob. Uh, hey, Eric, um, I remember, you know, after the Oklahoma State game, you know, you said that just wasn't Jalen's game and the coaching staff was pretty much in agreement. He shouldn't be in there down the stretch. That's about the only time I think that's happened unless he fouled out. I guess he fouled out against Auburn, I think, up here. But um, what do you thought? Of, what have you thought about the way he responded to that game? Because he's, he's played re really well since then. I mean, I think he's had a great year. I really do, Bob. I think from a defensive standpoint, loose balls. Um, all those things, I think he's been phenomenal for us. Um, you know, and sometimes you, you, you know, you, you have bad games and, and that's just part of basketball. Sometimes as, as a coach, you have a bad games. Sometimes as a husband, you have a bad day. Sometimes as a dad, you have a bad day. And as a player, you know, he had a bad game and he bounced back. He's always in the gym working on his game, but really, uh, Bob, it's the intangibles that make Jalen, you know, you know, so important to us. Could, could you expand on that? Loose balls, uh, rebounding his position, extra possessions, um, smart player, um, all those things I think are really important. Just, you know, other than just, you know, scoring the basketball, being a, even being a player that's being willing to uh, be a decoy in a, in a play or, um, you know, setting weak side pairs action to get a teammate a shot, all those things and being vocal in a timeout as well and, and giving feedback and input to his teammates as well as the coaching staff. And then this game, uh, it's Wednesday night, it's going to be the first top 20 matchup in Walton Arena since 1998. I think that was your first year in Orlando, if I, if I read it right. Wow. Um, just, yeah, just what do you think about that? It's, obviously it's been a long time. You know, we were all a lot younger then. Yeah, I was a lot younger then. Um, 
Um, I don't know. I'm just worried about, you know, I'm worried about this year and how do we win this game? And Alabama's had, uh, you know, an outstanding year. Um, when we played them the first time, their offense was like a Lamborghini and ours was like a Prius. Um, you know, so, I mean, the elephant in the room from game one, 90, 18, and 15. They made 15 threes. They scored 90 points, and we had 18 turnovers. So we obviously have to play a lot better basketball than we did in Tuscaloosa. And, and um, But, I th- you know, I think from a, uh, being ranked, you know, two weeks in a row, moving up in the rankings, um, you know, the stat you just mentioned, Bob, um, you know, just about how long it's been, um, you know, kind of puts things in perspective for, for probably our staff a little bit, as well as the players. And, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's hard to get ranked and it, and it's, and it's, and it's, you know, two really good teams playing. Uh, and obviously, you know, you look at Alabama and I think there's talent as, as, as any team in, in the country, they have, you know, three seniors, guys with great experience and Herb Jones and Petty and Reese and, um, their, their entire roster is really, really talented. And they had two players test the waters and Herb Jones and, and Petty and, and both those guys came back and, and they kind of spearhead this, this thing for Alabama. Kind of be like us getting Mason and Isaiah back. Nate? Yeah, just what the differences do you see in yourselves and Alabama since you last played them? I mean, I think they're, they're really well coached. Um, Coach Oates does a great job. I, I, I mentioned their experience. Uh, they have great offensive spacing. Um, they have a great drive and kick game. Uh, they're, they're a matchup nightmare um, because of the shooting and the ability to be pe- beat people off the bounce. Um, the, you know, their, their players fit their system really, really well. Um, they're a confident team. Uh, they're active on both sides of the ball. Everybody always talks about Alabama's offense. Their defense is phenomenal. Um, again, I mean, I just think you look at both sides of the ball there, there is, in my opinion, they're as good as anybody in the entire country. What about your own team? How do you feel it's different since, since you last played them other than obviously Justin Smith being healthy? Yeah. And I think that's a big part. Uh, Nate for us, but I think we've gotten better as the season's progressed, which is, you know, when you, when you, when you have three freshmen that, that, that play as many minutes as our freshmen do, you're kind of going to expect that those guys are going to get better. Um, And that's, you know, that's what's happened. I think our freshmen have gained confidence. I think that our three freshmen are continuing to understand what we want on both sides of the ball Um, you know, understanding second, third, and fourth options on offensively on our sets, and then also understanding, um, you know, maybe our rotations defensively, uh, they continue to get better at that. And then, and then even, you know, once Justin went out, you know, I think that we've done a really good job of, of, uh, kind of recovering and then, and then taking roles and expanding them to make us a little bit better team. Thank you. Curtis. Hey coach, I guess the last time you played Alabama was the last time you lost an SEC game. And I mean, when you think about, you know, where you were at that point and where you are now, first of all, what, what goes through your mind? And then secondly, do you, do you feel any differently, you know, going into this matchup compared to the first time? I mean, I think Curtis, you know, like when you look at our schedule, I mean, you know, the two teams that, um, you know, dominated the game against us were, were the, were the two teams that we played this week. And then we finish the regular season that's on the schedule now. Um, and then we'll find out the makeup game, um, whenever, but, but the three remaining games, uh, you know, you got to go on the road to South Carolina to finish up the seats. We have three really, really hard games. Um, and obviously, you know, coach Oates and, and, and the Alabama team is, has dominated, uh, the SEC uh, regular season and LSU is, is as talented um, and as tough a matchup 
um, as, as, as we can have as well. So just two really good, you know, teams at home and then, and then a road game. So, you know, we knew that, that early in the season conference play, it was tough. And we knew that towards the end, it was tough. And, um, you know, we're a better team, I think, but, but I also think Alabama's a better team. I really do. I think they've improved. I think they have an excellent coaching staff and they continue to get better as well. I don't just think that, that Arkansas is improving. I think that, that Alabama's improving as well. And then they did get Jordan Bruner back over the weekend, just your evaluation of him and the impact he makes being back in the mix. Yeah, I mean, Bruner's a really good player, obviously a player that we recruited. He can knock down threes. He's a very good rebounder. He's an active player. Uh, uh, another senior to add with, um, you know, the guys that have been there for, for four years and Jones, Petty, Reese, and then you throw in a grad transfer uh, in Bruner. That's, that's, you know, when you have four guys that are that experienced, um, you know, they're, they got all the pieces to, uh, you know, to do damage in March. And they've already done damage in our own league. Scotty. Hey, Coach. Obviously, you guys would prefer to play than have games postponed. But do you find the time between games during your layoffs beneficial from a prep standpoint and guys just being locked into the game plan? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, Scotty, that, you know, anytime you can, you know, if, if you try to design game plans around your opponent, then I think the more time that you have, the better. I mean, we all, you know, every, every coach studies other coaches and in your own sport and other sports. And, um, you know, at UCLA, when, when John Wooden was coaching, I mean, they kind of did what they did and they didn't worry about their opponents. And, and um, you know, we, we do try to, you know, do what we can to try to find something every game that's got its own theme or, or to try to find a, a weakness in a team. Although we really haven't found any weaknesses in Alabama. Um, but yes, I do think prep uh, benefits us or helps us more than non prep. And that might be the same case, you know, with everybody, um, you know, so, yeah, I, I don't think it hurts us. I do think that the players at this particular time of the year, they don't want long extended um, practices. Um, but I do think that they're, they're, you know, really bought into trying to, you know, pick up any little theme that we have on a particular game. You know, y'all y'all typically don't run a lot of post-ups offensively, but Justin had a good bit of success with that against Florida, was that just like a matchup deal or has he improved in that area throughout the year or, or both? I think both. And, and I think our cutting's really good um, when we post up. So if teams try to double or dig down, um, you know, I think that we have a pretty good counter game to that, um, you know, and, and uh, but yes, it was a, it was a matchup on that particular night. Uh, but I do think, you know, we have a little bit more back to the basket game um, of late, even if it's in transition and, and we go four out and one in at times. Um, but the big key is just not being stagnant and moving without the ball and teams that load up on, on the ball. We've had really good success of, of, of trying to basket cut and, um, you know, when people ball watch and, and over flood the, the, the ball side. Hayden. Hey, Coach, wanted to ask specifically about Connor, just how important he's going to be Wednesday night defensively. I think he's had at least two, uh, two or three blocks the past five games. And just with those seniors that you mentioned for Alabama and how quick they are and the scoring that they present, just how much of an impact and how important it is to keep him out of foul trouble on Wednesday night. Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, the big thing with the Alabama's transition game and, and uh, their ability to play five guys out on the perimeter is, uh, you know, like, what's our benefit when Connor's out there? You know, where do, how do we gain the advantage? Um, and those are some of the things that we're trying to talk with our team about and try to um, continue to make that evolve, um, what that mismatch potentially could be, or, or maybe it doesn't be a mismatch from our perspective. And, uh, but Connor's got to sprint back as do, does uh, Jay will and, and all of our bigs, uh, you know, have got to be uh, runners and sprinters and, and, and not joggers and not home run trotters. I mean, we got we got to get back as fast as we can. 
um, and eliminate their shots that happen in the first 12 seconds of a shot clock. Ty. Coach, Jalen mentioned that during this winning streak that the level of intensity has picked up even more in practice. And I know sometimes when teams go on a run, they start thinking they can get away with not doing the little things. How have you as a coaching staff and just kind of what have you seen from this players just picking it up despite winning seven straight SEC games? Yeah, Ty, I think that um, – Jay Tate's right. I mean, I think we, we have had our best practices over the last three weeks. We've had our most intense practices. Um, the buy-in and ability to pick up things and add new plays. Um, I mean, we, shoot, we added four different offensive sets before Florida. And, um, you know, they picked them up really quickly and they were able to, to, to not only, you know, do them on the practice floor, but then carry those, those sets into the game. Um, I think there's a heightened excitement right now of, of understanding that, um, you know, we're not in the dog days of, of, of a season that, that, um, you know, this thing's winding down. And, and uh, again, I don't know how the game's going to go Wednesday or, or Saturday or the following Tuesday in, in South Carolina, but I do know that, uh, we've practiced really, really hard, and we've practiced extremely focused. And on kind of and on physical, that, and physical, and physical, and kind of on that note, this is a matchup on Wednesday night. The one versus the tied for second team in the SEC, and whether it's message boards, whether it's us talking about it on the radio, Bob and Tom writing about it, um, Mike on TV. How do you keep the guys? from watching, listening, and reading that stuff so they can just concentrate on what's ahead? Yeah, I mean, I think fortunately, um, I don't think that, that any of our guys are listening to FM or AM radio. Um, I, 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 I think they're probably listening to music. Um, I don't think any of them, no offense you know, to anybody, but I, I don't think they get the newspaper uh, delivered to their house. Um, so I'm not really worried about it. I mean, I know Twitter world has got its own little, you know, stuff out there. Um, but I think whatever about Alabama, I think I'm probably telling them um, that they're a great team. They got great talent. They're really well coached. Um, you know, so I think that they understand, you know, the importance um, but I don't think any of them are going to call into a call-in show anytime over the, over the next, you know, couple of weeks. I might, but I don't think they will. Troy. Yeah. Coach, you know, you, you, the last time you, uh, you know, played Alabama, you're coming off, um, you know, a rough loss against LSU and then a 31 point loss to Alabama, but you've constantly said that this team is better, different and more confident. Uh, but what, how does the team feel going into this rematch against Alabama? Well, I, th I mean, I think, I mean, I don't, how many, did you guys just get Tate today or just one player? Um, yeah. I mean, they, they would have to look, we got our butts kicked. Uh, we played two road games back to back. Um, no excuses. Um, about who was injured, who wasn't injured. There's, there's none of that that goes on here. We, um, you know, they played phenomenal. We didn't. Uh, they play phenomenal on a lot of nights. Um, you know, and, and our approach from Wednesday night to Saturday to the last, like we've got to have an even keel approach uh, moving forward. We have to play and practice as hard as we can get ready to play players stay on an emotional, even keel. I'll be the guy up and down like a yo-yo. And, you know, that's, I mean, that's all we can do really. I mean, it's, we're playing a great team. We're playing a, a top ranked team in the country. Like uh, if we think we're going to play a A minus game and win, I can already tell you the answer to that quiz. We ain't winning. We have to play a great game on Wednesday um, in order to, to, to win the game and give, give ourselves a chance to even win. And it's going to be the same thing on Saturday. 
Thanks, Coach. Randy. Uh, by the way, Eric, it's uh, 1037, the buzz. Uh, the call in number is 501 661 1037. It airs okay. from four to seven. Okay. Four to seven? Yeah. I'll call you on my way home. Okay. That just, just so you know. Um, momentum and rhythm is so important to a team. And you had a lot of momentum. You had the rhythm coming out of the Florida game, but we know what happened with Texas A&M. Are you worried or does that even come into play thinking about having that momentum kind of momentarily stopped and, and, and maybe getting a little bit out of rhythm? Well, I mean, I think a couple of things, Randy, number one, um, we were jolted. We weren't, it wasn't just kind of stopped. Like we were, we were ready to play a game. Right. Um, I mean, I, I think everybody can tell my, by, by my body language, you know, we weren't excited about having that game or the other one canceled, but we do understand we're playing in a pandemic. Uh, health is the most important thing. We want to make sure everybody, um, you know, that does get games canceled across the country, that everybody remains healthy and, um, you know, but having said that, and I've said it from the get go is every game takes on its own identity, its own style, its own rhythm. So yeah, we wish we would have played on Saturday to stay in our normal uh, routine. It didn't happen. We're in a pandemic. I woke up happy today that I get to coach the game right now on Wednesday and our players get to play a game. And so you know, I don't think that there can be any excuses, you know, that we didn't play on Saturday. You know, it's none of that. I mean, look, we're, we're, we're ready to get a, get an opportunity to play in our own building. Um, I think any time that there's three referees and, and there's another team in another uniform that all of us are, are happy with, with just the chance to compete. Bob, follow up question, please. Yeah, Eric, I know you I know you can't give specifics, but with this extra time, even this late in the season, are there some things you can add for Alabama, some some new wrinkles? I mean, I, you know, I don't think there's that much time to 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 completely alter what you do, Bob. I mean, I do I mean every game we usually add a new offensive play, and sometimes that play after that game um, you know, dissipates and is never part of our our, our play calls again. And sometimes we keep that thing in the, in, into our, into our play groupings. Um, so I think we can add little things, but I think this late in the year, it's, you know, it's really hard. I mean, we've changed a lot of our pick and roll coverages over the last seven games, which has really helped us. And, and we continue to evolve in, in certain coverages, just little things, Bob, I don't think you can change a whole, um, you know, style or, or system, but, but I think you can, you can change things for short stretches. And then get, getting back to Jalen, um, how much do you think his age and maturity being a fifth year guy helped him not dwell on that Oklahoma state game and bounce back the way he has? Yeah. I mean, I think that, um, I mean, first of all, he's, you know, he's making an adjustment too to a new position. And, and so he's done an incredible job with that. And, and, um, I mean, he's, he's got great toughness, you know, mental toughness is really good. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm not surprised at all, but certainly being a senior and, and, and being a player who's been through injuries, um, rehab and come back. I think, I think he's got great mental toughness and, and, uh, so it's not a surprise. I mean, I think that's with anybody, whether you're a coach or a player or whatever, like when you, when, when you lose a game or, uh, you have a bad game or you're in a shooting slump, you got you to figure out a way to mentally bounce back as quick as you can so it doesn't linger and affect your form. When you're talking about the, the elephant in the room, uh, it looks like it froze there. When you're talking about the elephant in the room, did, it, did you say that because that's Alabama's mascot or, or did you even think about that? Well, Bob, I think that would be up for you guys to try to determine whether that was planned or not. Okay, I think it was planned. You got to figure out a way to work a newspaper into one of your pregame talks. I will. Okay, get, get, get your guys to, to brainstorm on that. We're on it. Okay. Okay, coach. Appreciate hey, your time. Hey, Randy, 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 
keep that hotline open between those times, man. I mean, they send you the hotline number. Uh, no, I got it all memorized, man. I'm calling you. See you. <laughs>